出国那个 slam 就有刀山戏码。我们这里让把个劲啦，有光热光个上嘛，有老本山，把个劲不卡死尿，把个劲跟闹，把个手卡劲啦，卡拉打不烂，把本伢干打卡烂，卡得个把把卡拉哈都卡塔卡塔。Bagi lo angru, bagi am day bandon kanu kanu kencing shifting, nama mereka ram, kaba kaba sorkar kadai bandseu, kadai hi kaba bentar jang kaba jing teri kam, bad jing pelut jang kaba sorkar jela. Dangshen ukon rat sangma ulah penpau hayeng dor bar thau an, ha kaba dor bar mang tengka, bagi man bagi kaba sorkar jela kaba shimram, ha kaba kaba sorkar pedengru kala bo, dah kaba kindon, kaba am la ban yaj palat, ha bagi day bad kaba jing shimram. Bat kani kam day, ban day kano guno kajing kuslay, namar kajing penlut kanam long palat pun. Ula penrap ru da kabaong baka sorkar India ru kalah perking bha ha kabaya day bat kani. Bat amdan kawai ru kajela kabala ban nyaj palat ya upun balabu da kasorkar. Kadon kajing kentok baka sorkar jela kalah dap ram da ki pau hajar kelur tingka, kata kumbak hat sao hajar kelur. Henry, Menteri Rangba Ula Ong, bahagia mang tengka jang kejela, kejing seo ram la mang kum bakhandai spa aprapapra kelur tengka, bat kejing sim ram kakot hadu arajar lai spa lai pukhandai kelur tengka. Sir, coming back to my submissions and my clarifications, that there are two parts that I normally am stressing on in this entire reply which is that uh, the focus of the government while we move forward is going to be on two aspects. One is the $10 billion economy. We have to touch 80,000 crores of, of our economy in the next five years. And the second is five lakh job opportunities must be created. So these are the two goals and the targets with which we are moving forward in trying to ensure that we are able to take our state forward in the right direction. There is also a sense of negativity when people talk about debt in the state. So let me inform everybody that there is nothing to fear here about debt or a debt trap or the fact that we will be uh, we are taking so much of uh, loan or all these aspects. Sir, loans are part of a government's expenditure. Every government takes loan. But while we take loans, government of India has prescribed a system and a format in which you can take it. Government of India has put a limit on the amount you can take and no state can take beyond that even if you want to. So there is nothing to worry. The money is there, we are spending it in the proper manner. We are not going into areas where government of India is not allowing us to. So therefore, we have only used these limitations in terms of the resources of, uh, from the debt or the loan market to the extent that is allowed by government of India. So all different states are also doing the same, and Meghalaya is no different. None of the states are allowed to go beyond a certain level, sir. Umentri Rangba Ulabatairu baka sorkar ka ladon lepa ka pisa ka bala bo ha ka ta ka consolidating sinking fund ka bala plek nang ba kum ka jingkersan dada jia ba poi shado upod bamla aban sew ya ka sot bat ka ram. Ula ong baki don ki projek ki bala bay pisa ling ba ka World Bank ha ka baka sorkar India ka ay kandai po na ka shispa kat baka sorkar jela ka haban bay tang si po na ka shispa ka balong hi kum ka jingyarap ya ka jela Am baka daika ram kumbala kino. Kumta u Menteri Rangba Ula Ong, bala daka jela kam shim kabu ban priang yaka jingbay pisa kabalong kandai po naka shispa baka sorkar India kala bay bat sew yaka ram kan long ka jingdo yaka jela namar ka sorkar pedeng kala aylat yaka jela ban bay tang si po naka shispa. In fact, just to share with the house, there is something called the Consolidating Sinking Fund. And this has been created at the national level for different, different states, in case a situation comes up where you are not able to make your repayments. And these are systems that are put in place. Meghala government has 800 crores in this consolidating sinking fund, which is a backup in case our interest payments and repayments cannot be done on time. So multiple systems are in place where there's no question of any state being able to go into any kind of situation where uh, they are in a debt trap or they have taken extra loan because the system doesn't allow and the government of India 
is very, very strict about it. And as I mentioned, the reason why a lot of people fear that is because of the externally aided projects. They hear the world, the name of World Bank and this bank and that bank. And I have clarified numerous times on the floor of this house that these loans that are taken, these are repaid 90% by government of India. Meghalaya government repays only 10% of the loan. So hence, the impact on us is minimum. And therefore, it's almost like a grant that has been given, which is normally the 90-10 ratio which is given for any centrally sponsored scheme. So it would be a loss for us not to take advantage of that. And that's the reason why externally aided projects today, we are taking maximum benefit because 90% of it, of the loan component, is repaid by government of India. Only 10% is repaid by us, and therefore, this is something that one should not be concerned about as much because, as I said, there are very strong systems in place for any state government, and no government can flaunt those rules. And government of India is very, very strict, as I mentioned about those particular issues. Halor ke jingkut no bantahan yang kami kahalinya kum ke jelah ke babam sabtam Menteri Rangba Ula Ong baka ni ke deka jingyalam bakala Namar ke jelah ke don ke thong bat jingpun kere Ban kentew ya kipat nong song senong jong ke jelah Ula kerpat ya kipat bak ke jelah Ban nam don ke no gunu ke jingpet ya ke jelah Kum ke jelah ke bas niw Ula ong ru baki don shibon ki kampen roy ki balak ban le La ka day leng ba ki kor ki bor ne IT Bat ka sorkar padeng ru ka ay khus naam jika mighalaya Damar ka jing nang keo jong ka ha ka kam jing ok kai perthay Na lor ki wei ki wei Ukon rat ula ong ru baka sorkar jela ka bo ya ka thong Ban poi sya ka jing temu Ban yo ya ka kot ka balong shipo milian Ha kini ki senem Bat ru ban thao kumba san lak teli ki kam Sir, while I mention these points uh, I would like to just stress on one or two also important aspects of uh, uh, one uh, perception that has been tried to be created, or a narrative, as we call it, uh, being created. And one of the honorable members had mentioned in uh, their uh, speech that uh, there is uh, uh, this tag of corruption on one of the most corrupted states being, being put in in the state of Meghalaya, and uh, that uh, uh, it's embarrassing sometimes that uh, when the children are outside, uh, they are being spoken to. Uh, and, and of course, this issue they're trying to uh, make out, sir. And uh, I just like to tell the people of our state that while the statement which was made during election by certain individual who then finally came here during our swearing in program itself our election statements and many allegations have been made i want to remind that even there are members in this house who are part of a government then we elections came in and in elections we do give our speeches now the honorable member is not here i i really hope that they were here but there was a time when the congress government was there in delhi the allegations for cash for vote scam the allegation for CWG scam, the allegation for Tatra truck scam, the allegation for chopper scam, the allegation for 2G spectrum scam, the allegation for the coal scam, the allegation for other scam, the allegation for Satyam scam. Sir, allegations are there. If we look at these aspects and say allegations will prove, then I guess the honorable member will also have to explain all these different allegations that were made. But today, if you go in the market and you ask the people of the country, Sir, Meghalaya is known for Meghalayan age. In this whole world today, we're living in the Meghalayan age. We are known for our Lakadong turmeric. We are known to be the music capital, the rock capital of the country. We are known for our root bridges. We are known for our youth who are excellent resource for the IT sector. So these are the areas which we are known for. And therefore, let us not create a negative impact and a negative opinion of ourselves. We have a great future, sir. We have a great plan to achieve those different goals that we have. And let us not be the people who will try to create negative image of ourselves. As responsible leaders, it is our duty to ensure that while the entire world recognizes 
the IT work and the e-governance work that is going on in Meghalaya, which was given an international award by the UN. While the entire country, the tourism sector, the tourism ministry, has given us an award for one of the, one of the better states for sustainable tourism. While the uh, immunization department, the health department, has given us an award for uh, our immunization program, where we have got awards for JJM, sir, the world today recognizes that Meghalaya is changing. And that is the image that we would like to take forward. Now, just to give example of what I'm trying to say, sir, if you were to look at just one sector, say, for example, the tourism sector. Now, I'll just give you a rough idea of what we're talking about. Now, if you look at how the tourism sector is going to add to the economy of the state, now, we expect a small example. So this is it's a very generic thing, not very specific. So if we were to calculate what the tourism sector gives, now, a Taj Vivanta example, which has 93 rooms, and if you go with an occupancy rate of about 70% in the whole year, and uh, we look at the average rates in terms of the rooms that are there, about 7,000, 8,000 rupees, we are expecting that about 54 crores will be added to the GSDP just through Taj Vivanta. Through Courtyard Marriott, about 182 rooms are there. Again, looking at an average costing uh, based on the rooms that they have. And uh, looking at a 70% occupancy again, we expect Courtyard Marriott, Marriott to add about 106 crores to the GSDP. Similarly, if you look at the homestays, where we're targeting 10,000 homes and rooms, when we're able to achieve those rooms of 10,000 homestays, we expect on an average, in terms of the amounts that will be collected by the rates that are being prescribed, and with 70% again occupancy, we expect this to add about 2,920 crores in terms of value to the GSDP. Similarly, large accommodation units, which are there, about 500 of them will be, will be created. They may not be five stars, all of them, but the different units that are there, on an average, again, putting 4,000, 5,000 rupees in terms of the rate that is there and about 70% occupancy. So we expect about 2,190 crores to be added to the GSTP. So if you were to add all of this together, once we are able to achieve these different homestay projects, able to have more hotels, we expect that the tourism sector alone will add about 6,000 crores to the GSDP of the state. So this is how we are approaching everything. And if you look at the employment that is generated in the tourism sector through these different programs that we're having, all these different accommodations that are there will roughly add approximately 45,000 jobs to the economy. And this is, uh, as I said, these are direct employments, indirectly other sectors which will be affected uh, like, uh, you know, travel agents and, uh, you know, the uh, tour guides and um, other areas which are there, restaurants, I'm not including those. So just the tourism sector alone, if you are able to implement the kind of programs that we are envisaging in this budget, we are looking at moving towards a 6,000 crore economy in the tourism sector, which is just direct, only the rooms, I'm sorry, not the sector, just the accommodations. And we're looking at about close to 45,000 jobs being created. So this just gives you an example of the plan that we have. Now you imagine this being done for the IT sector. You can imagine the same calculations being done for the agriculture and the processing sector. The same calculation being done for international trade, as was being mentioned by some of the members. And uh, the infrastructural projects that we will do. And hence, while we have a target, we also have a plan in place to achieve those targets. And the different steps that we have mentioned in the budget are the ways and means in which we will be able to achieve these two very important goals of having a $10 billion economy and number two, creating five lakh new job opportunities. But sir, I have another small uh, uh, submission I'll just like to add here that, uh, again, just to share with our, our uh, August House and the members, on how we plan to move forward in certain areas. Now, the, when I say that, for example, the five lakh jobs opportunities that we want to create in the next five years, 
So we have specifically broken down the target sector-wise. So I don't want to go too much into detail, but we're looking at aspects of, say, for example, so the tourism and hospitality. So I mentioned about 45,000 jobs we expect to create in that. In the IT, ITES sector, we expect about 50,000 jobs to be created in that. We've also mentioned government and semi-government uh, organizations. We expect about 10,000 jobs to be created in that. We have, ex we have expectations that through entrepreneurship and small-scale enterprises, we expect about one lakh. So like that, there are multiple sectors in which we have made realistic plans. And in order to achieve these goals, what investments need to be made and what uh, you know, programs to be brought out, all these have been done in a very detailed manner. Of course, we will have to continue to revisit these targets. We'll continue to work on them and improve on them. And uh, as the situation unfolds, we will have to adapt to the situation that comes in front. So just want to share, sir, that while we have put a lot of steep targets in front of us, we have a specific plan in order to move forward.